of spot on sports where we're not just accurate we're spot on this is a new wave of sports we are the hosts i am wayne galloway with me as always my colleagues ex xavier and abdul fellas introduce yourselves man what's going on ladies and gentlemen i'm back once again to give y'all the thriller in manila is that man and Dooley, D-A-T, man, D-O-O-L-E-Y, baby. Y'all know where to find me, that man. It's your smell. What X is about to start cooking. Y'all already know, man. X, man, you know how we do, man. We about the ladies, cold, hard facts. You know the people's champion. You already know. Um, Today's topics we have is NCAA men and women's college championship. Uh, we also have ESPN's top 25 list. We also have, um, we're going to mention the WNBA lack of opportunities with their upcoming draft. We um, also have the Paul Pierce situation should athletes and broadcasters have more freedom. And lastly, we have Charles, Charles Barkley on politics with um, politicians saying they divide and conquer to keep power. But before we get into today's show, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe on our YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter, which is at spot underscore on sports. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, and follow us as well. All right, fellas. Abdul, I know you've seen it, the March Madness games. It ended in March Madness. A lot of people probably didn't have Baylor winning. How you feel about the Gonzaga and Baylor game? Also, how you feel about the Stanford and Arizona game from the women's? Okay, well, first I'm going to start off with the ladies because, you know, that's Pac-12 ball for us West Coasters right here, you know. So, first of all, it was just unique that two Pac-12 teams from the same conference made it into the national championship, okay? So, shout okay. out to the ladies from Stanford and shout out to the ladies from Arizona, okay? So, the fact of the matter is... I like Ari McDonald. She's a great player from Arizona. But the issue is Stanford had already beat Arizona twice this season. When I saw that, I was like, man, Arizona got an uphill battle, you know? So it's a reason mm -hmm. Arizona made it to the championship, but it's also a reason why they lost. So Stanford had to sweep them three times in a row to make it real legit. And that is why the Lady Cardinals took home the Women's National Championship. Okay. Now, as far as the boy side of things, okay. Gonzaga, Gonzaga. That's all I heard, <laughs> left and right. And I ain't gonna lie, I was on the that's Gonzaga me. wagon too. Me too. Okay? I, say, I, I said it right okay? So, but let me just be honest with you. Let me tell you when I jumped off of the wagon. When Gonzaga struggled with UCLA, mind you, the best number 11 seed we've ever seen. But nonetheless, the 11 seed. Yeah. I knew Baylor was going to kill those boys. I was like, Gonzaga, you guys are supposed to put UCLA away. But if Baylor and UCLA played, it wouldn't have came down to a buzzer beater. I think we all can agree on that right now, you know? So the fact that Gonzaga only beat them by a buzzer beater, it showed me that Baylor was going to come into town and like my granny used to say, you you know, and that's exactly what happened, okay? Go ahead, boys. Hey, go ahead. How you feel about the game? Um, I start with the ladies as well, you know, ladies first. Um, Arizona, I've never been to Arizona, but I like Arizona. So, you know, they're they the ones that, you know, I'm siding on. Um, they, they obviously, all the ladies playing the game the right way. Um, I'm not going to lie. I don't, and I'm just so terrible at this. I'm not, I haven't been watching the females play as much as the men. And I apologize to all the females. You know, I know they hooping out there, giving buckets mm -hmm. after buckets. But I, I got a, a, I seen clips of uh, Arizona and I really like them. Um, as far as the Gonzaga, I'm been on the wagon too. That's where I really kept my eye on. I told, I thought you know they were gonna win it all, but uh, barely. You know, did they think? Um, it just goes to show you sometimes everybody that thinks the best team gonna win it, it doesn't happen all the way. So, um, you know, it was it was a it was a good game. Uh, congratulations to Baylor, whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm just sick. I ain't gonna lie. My soul just sick. I, I, I'm a good thing I didn't bet no money on that game. 
you know what I'm saying? I would have been disappointed. But uh, I thought Gonzaga was definitely going to put it, pull it off. I mean, they, they was running through the whole season, so I thought they was going to close it out. Mm. I see we all on the same side here, so I'm going to just make this short for the, the women's. First of all, like you said, they've been balling out lately. Um, I hope everybody paying attention, giving them their props, twist, do recognition, love. It's the same way y'all get the fellas. But um, the ladies recently, um, Stan, um, Stanford, um, I had a feeling they probably going to win. I've actually liked how Arizona won against Drew The style they won it. Like, they came in with something to prove. And their coach, when right. they showed a clip of her cuts and said, F, you know, the reporters and the commentators. I, I like that. I like that energy and the effort they put into proving doubt is wrong. I did want them to win, but like I said, I knew Stanford, they, that's already a talented team. And like Abdul said, they beat them twice already. But usually when they go into the playoffs of the championship, you know, things change, but clearly it didn't. Now on the men's side, as, as always, I'm spot on. I usually get stuff spot on. I didn't get it with this Gonzaga one. And I didn't disrespect Baylor anyway. I, I knew they had defense, but that offense, they came out shooting, speed, physicality. It was just like, it looked like JV versus Boss City out there. And it was just, Suggs was shut down. Suggs did his thing. Timmy got shut down. I, I didn't know what was going on. And um, I am just want to tell people out there, don't doubt. You know, don't underestimate nobody. Don't doubt nobody. I didn't, I didn't do it, but it just made you sit back and think like, wow, like anything, any given Sunday, anything can happen. I got a question. If Gonzaga and Bella, if that was a seven game series, do y'all think Bella would have still won? No. Okay. Me neither. That's a good question. No. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I, I think they would have huh? won. That, the, that right. game showed everything. We Once again, UCLA almost beat Gonzaga. It came yeah. down to a buzzer beater. Okay. Baylor was the only other team everybody knew was going to make it. So let's not act like Gonzaga was just head above heels Baylor. We all just thought Gonzaga was going to win because of their record being undefeated. Sure. But th- let me get deeper with you. The reason, the, one of the main reasons why they weren't ready for Baylor is because Gonzaga plays in a conference called the WCC, boys. Baylor plays in the Big 12. It's a complete difference. You yeah. wonder why Gonzaga dominates every year. It's because Gonzaga never plays anybody. Okay? Baylor plays better schools than Gonzaga. So you know what they did? They say, you know what, Gonzaga, y'all going to taste my pain. You're going to feel my pain tonight. Okay? Mm. And, and that's what Baylor did. We're going to show yeah, they- you boys that you boys ain't faced nobody this whole season on our level. UCLA, they make them look like they weren't undefeated. Exactly. UCLA gave us the blueprint. They gave us the blueprint on how to beat you guys. Okay? So that's what they did. Okay? They watched the blueprint, mm. and they took care of business. Because I'm here to tell you, UCLA would have lost to Baylor, too. But by more points, it wouldn't have came down to a buzzer beater. Baylor would have just straight up beat them. Okay? Um, absolutely. I agree with you. And um, speaking of basketball, let's just keep it going with this ESPN top top twenty five list. Um, I'm I've seen it. I know y'all seen it, and um, I, I'm done with ESPN. I just in general, ESPN is just I don't know what's going on with them. Who's behind the scenes? Who's what? Uh, what are they watching? I'm just running down the top twenty five list for y'all real quick. Actually, you gonna be the first one to say so I know you've been talking about this. I'm just running down the top twenty five plays, and you know you. Disagree, agree, which one you believe is one to last. Or oh, you can see which one you agree with. Um, Luka Donick, one. Zion, two. LaMelo, three. Donovan Mitchell, four. Tatum, five. De'Ar- De'Aaron Fox, six. Ben Simmons, seven. Devin Booker, eight. Bam Abayo, nine. Shai Goliath Alexander, 10. Brandon Ingram, 11. Jalen LeBron, 12. Michael Porter, I mean, Jalen Brown, you're 12. Jamal Murray, 13. Michael Porter, 14. John Morant, 15. Trey Young, 16. Mikel Bridges, 17. Sabonis, 18. Anthony Edwards, 19. Aiden, 20. 21, Tyrese. 22, Collins. 23, Allen. Lonzo and Collins, sex. Yes, a long list. But do you agree with the list? Hell no. I don't agree with the list. Exactly. I ain't shit yeah. everybody. 
First of all, you want me to go? You want to ten? Want to ten real quick? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we can just do I ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Luca, Zion, Lamelo, Donovan Mitchell, Tatum, De'Aaron Fox, Ben Simmons, Devin Booker, Bam Adebayo, Shy Guy Alexander. You might have to run that back, but I might ask you again to run that back for because I don't, I just don't. Remember. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna, st- I'm gonna do the top right five now. First. Luca's one. Luca's one. I'm not mad at that. Okay, I'm. I can put Luca as one. No, who's number two? Zion. Zion. Hell no. Hell <laughs> no. Hell no. Zion ain't better than. Uh, so hold on, Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons is over twenty five. Ben Simmons seven. No, oh, Ben Simmons. Zion ain't better than Ben Simmons, y'all. I, I'm gonna be, be honest. I'm not saying Ben Simmons. So is you two. agree with Luca number one? Yes. Okay, that's all we need to know. Um, Jalen Brown, uh, Jason Jaylen Tatum, Brown, Jason Tatum is five. I don't know how the hell Jason Tatum is number five when he's not even the best player on his team. What the hell they do okay. that at? Oh. Jalen Brown is the best player on the Celtics. He's the best player on the Celtics. He he he's, he can score the ball and he plays better defense than Tatum. So. I, I need him to be number five, if anything. Um, here's my top five. Luca. Luca. <laughs> you run the top five one more time. Luca, Zion, LaMelo, Donovan Mitchell, Tatum. Luca, Donovan Mitchell, Jalen, uh Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Ben Simmons. Yeah, that's my top five right there. Oh, hold on. Did I say Donovan Mitchell? I said Donovan Mitchell, right? Say Mitchell, okay. too. Yeah. I do. Okay. How, how you feeling about that? Well, see, uh, th- there's just one player. And it, it hurts me to say, but I love this guy. You know, first of all, they're right about Luca being number one. Okay. Ooh. Where they're wrong is LaMelo Paul, everybody. I love LaMelo, but he's not a top 10 player under the age of 25 because he hasn't shown us enough of a resume. Yeah. Right now, they have they have what? Brandon Ingram at 11? Brandon Ingram is better than LaMelo right now in today's world. Yeah, X, you heard me. Yeah, yeah. He will, well, Hell right, no. Right. <laughs> Hell yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. How you going to say a rookie that ain't proved nothing Better than a player that's been in the league four five years already, and he a star on his team. Ingram Ma- a star. Magic was a rookie. He was better than shit, some of the players back then, and won the NBA Finals. What you saying? Right, right. But Lamelo ain't Magic. Yeah, yeah. Let's not even go there. <laughs> yeah, Lamelo ain't Magic. You know. Mm. But uh, like I told you, I like Lamelo. But top five X, nah. You didn't even no, have no, your no, top five. No, he not. Oh. He not. <laughs> So he's on the bottom of the top 10 slash he's in the teens. He, that's where LaMelo is around agree, that area. Agree. You know, that's all I was saying. But, uh, you know, even say, uh, say Gilders Alexander, that's not a player I talk about a lot, but he's a hell of a ball player. I will say that. And he's gotten better throughout the seasons. LaMelo's not better than him. Not yet. Not in my opinion, you know. But anyways... Uh, Alexander. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, OKC. Okay, look him up. He yeah, nice. yeah, I know who he is. Look him, he up. look him up. Look up the stats, brother. Serious? Look up Are the stats, serious? brother. You know, and stats it just, don't always tell the story. It's the impact, though. Hey, well, listen. Being in the league for half a season and you already hurt, that ain't gonna tell the story either, brother. You know, you can't. Don't give this man what you, you already got. First of all, they, whoever made this list, they're not smoking crack cocaine. They smoking cocaine crack. That's what they smoking <laughs> on. Okay, because when you talk about Donovan Mitchell, Lamelo ahead of Donovan Mitchell, what? Lamelo ahead of Tatum, what? This is too many players. Lamelo is not ahead of yet. Okay, so Agreed. yes, so that that's all my point is whether or not you think some of the players I think is better than Lamelo is better than Lamelo. You know that's your opinion, but Lamelo is barely cracking the top ten. To be honest, just to be fair, I got him in the teens. He ain't played enough basketball yet. 
But we but we all agree Luca's leading the charge on this, right? Absolutely. And that's where I come in right there, because I'm the only I'm gonna be the only one that say Luca is top three, but he's not to me number one. Top five, I, I'm gonna say the most disrespected player on the list is clearly I think Devin Booker. He's number one. He's under twenty five. Um, Oh yeah, shit. Devin Booker number eight. My memory, yeah. but man, I did not know that. I thought he was. I thought he was twenty. I have Devin 26. Booker one. He's in the league for a while. That's why it seems like he's. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm tripping. Devin Booker, Donovan Mitchell, Luca, Jamal Murray, and John Morant. That's not a bad list. You know what? I forgot about John. You called the list the whole list out. I still forgot about some players. You absolutely it, it, right. it's, a, it's a long list, but you absolutely right. Lamelo, Tatum, Fox. I don't think better than none of the five I just mentioned. John Morant proved himself already. John, John Morant Booker, is better Stan. than Lame- John Morant top Luka five. Stan. I think I yes. think I'll miss him. I think I'll miss him. And Jamal Murray from the Denver Nuggets is underrated. Hell nah, He's hell nah. Fan. He, he nah, That's nah, when the disrespect come in. You know, come we on, are, I, I do. He, he, don't know, no he, he top he 10. Don't know he top Murray. 10, though. He top yeah. 10, though. Hey, he no, but 10. Jamal Murray, though, better than LaMelo, though, too. Uh, oh, oh, no, no, facts, facts, facts. Okay, facts, okay, facts, facts. okay. But he top 10. He ain't top five. He top 10. Okay. He top 10. Y'all like the pre we see anyway. We you know we made our list this spot on sports list, not no crack what cocaine on crack and no ESPN list, we say. Exactly. But um I wanted to get into this also about the WNBA. We can make this is gonna be a, a quick take. Um right now, what's going on? Y'all don't know everybody out there. There's 52 players from colleges and university that declare for the WNBA draft. And now it may sound good to y'all, but that's the least number ever to declare for a draft in women's basketball history. Also, it's 144 spots in the WNBA. Only 12 spots on each roster. Now it's made get cut down to 11 due to the salary cap, which is not going up. Um, so that's telling y'all right there, many women will not have an opportunity to get drafted or even have an opportunity to play. And the women are pushing to have another lead. I do how you feel about that. I feel like this needs attention, more attention. No, that's why it's Kobe was it. Absolutely. Unfortunately, the ladies' league does not produce the the fans it should be producing you know it's not producing the revenue and it's very unfortunate i like women's basketball i'm here to tell you some of those professional players are better than most men average guys you know like if you take one of your homies and face one of those girls in the wnba (laughs) you'll be surprised how good those girls are you know um so I, it's just unfortunate, and hopefully they can. I don't know. Do they have a European league for ladies? You know, it's for. They don't. It's know. A, they don't know. know. I don't know. I ain't never heard of it. I I I, I just heard of them playing overseas sometimes, but yeah. Right. So it's a forever growing field. You know, just like how the WNBA at once upon a time didn't exist, there'll be other entities that exist that will allow female players to go play elsewhere. Okay, but as far as getting the league's revenue up, the NBA is doing all they can. So nobody can say the NBA has not taken trying to boost up the revenue because the WNBA's money is the NBA's money. The WNBA would have never started if it wasn't for the NBA. You know, who's people had to sponsor that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So so it's just a. Uh, it's just unfortunate that the ladies, some ladies will never achieve their dream. But if you ask me also, that makes the WNBA more elite. If there's only 11 roster spots, only 152 players, like you were saying, that means we're watching the best of the best ladies. Yeah. Product wise. You know what I mean? Now, the NBA is a little more watered down. You know what I mean? Not that you don't have to be good to be in the NBA, but there are players in the G League, there are players that aren't in the NBA that can take some roster spots in the NBA. You know what I mean? You know, now for the women's game, it's not making the revenue, but at least what we're watching is the top tier product, the best women's basketball players in the world. I'm done, boys. Go ahead. X, how you feel about that? Women's not getting a lot of opportunity. Uh man, it's 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 not ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like I feel like you know, 
I've, you know, keep saying that women should be shown more love and, you know, the late great Kobe, um, he, he started to, you know, go to the games and show him love, not only for, you know, his daughter, but to support the um, women across the world that plays basketball, really. Because I think, to be honest, I think people didn't start taking notice until Kobe started going to the games, really, to be honest. And I, um, <clears throat> I feel like the only way to make, to help make money for these women I feel like it has to be more celebrities, not just athletes, but like movie stars, comedians. The same way they would come see a Laker game, you know how them stands used to be filled from Mm -hmm. top to bottom. They need to they need to do the same thing for these ladies. We got to show them that, like, yo, we interested because the more publicity, the more publicity. Thank you. Okay, the more publicity um, the game gets for them the more revenue, the more endorsements, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? More networking, all that. So I, I just feel like they just need to, they need a, um, what's some things you can do to start the car to jump a cable? They just need a jump start. That's all they need. <laughs> just, just a jump start, man. They, they just need a jump start because I saw something the other day, like one of the highest paid females is making like 200 and some thousand or something like that, 400,000, like, that's that's bench player money. That's 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 damn near war. Yeah, they compared boy it to money, LeBron. Okay? They compared it to LeBron, and it was a big blow up. Like, not to interrupt you, but and and that's not yeah. even that's not oh. even talking about LeBron shoe deals and stuff. That's just his NBA contract. It's crazy, man. Oh, that's and I want. before I let you get it, Wayne, my bad. Mm. I challenge all the viewers and all of y'all, man, on Spot on Sports. They say they're supposed to be having full capacity in the arena soon so i just challenge y'all to at least go to a couple try to at least three hopefully man to a couple of female uh basketball games i know me and wayne we up north so we got the washington mystics i definitely want to um see them play especially that girl she plays power forward i forgot her name but i definitely want to see her play uh so i just challenge y'all man to just you know catch a game or two wouldn't hurt take his agree with both of y'all you know, I, I just don't – I don't like how it is. I don't like how the ladies are being treated. Like, we're supposed to be not our queens, but, like, you know, in general, they're queens. We're, the guys are supposed to be called the kings. We're supposed to be treated equally. I don't think – let it, like, give them a chance. That's all I I, I like them. Y'all already know they're talented. You know, they want opportunities. You, you never know when you put money into something how better it can get or what change can it bring to the table. And they brave it in the men when it comes to you know social justice and everything. Like they do a lot, and look how what look what the commissioners and owners do to them. Like it's BS, and I, I'm tired of. I, I our ladies need to just need an opportunity. That's all I'm saying. And speaking of opportunity, <sighs> Pistol Pete, aka Paul Purge, on an off day. I don't know if he was off, but y'all seen the live. Y'all seen the video. Had and some females in there, you know. No, man, hey, going crazy. Yeah, I, I gotta inf- gonna get to it. Go ahead. What you guys say? I didn't see the video, so I I just heard about it. I don't know what was in the man, video. I might have to go watch it though. I ain't gonna say he was intoxicated. <laughs> I ain't gonna say he was high, but he was lit. And the ladies in the back twerking. You know, a couple hours later, ESPN fired them, and I was just thinking like the freedom of players having to do what they can outside of their profession. I I don't. I'm right. I'm running this topic because I don't like that that they have to be. Watch twenty four seven. Or have to lead by example off the, off with their profession doing like, then let them be them. You know, I ask how you feel about that. I don't like that. I know you. I, I, I don't I know do, that. I, I, I do. How you one. feel about that first? <laughs> no, no, you did. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm running back again. I didn't quite get it. I do. How you feel about the Paul Pierce situation? My fault. Okay. The so, you know, obviously. If he wanted to get fired, there's other ways of doing things. So I just want to say, first and foremost, on the negative part of things, he was very unprofessional, you know. Okay. Yeah, With all true. that being said, ladies and gentlemen, Paul Pierce didn't care. Okay. <laughs> Paul Pierce isn't me. He isn't you. He's not us. Paul Pierce is a millionaire. Okay. <laughs> this is a man with money. Okay. And, you know, and not just money, but generational money, okay? So 
when I sit here and tell you guys, Paul Pierce, he wasn't worried about getting fired. He knew what was going to happen. You know, it was all just a matter of time. He he was he, he lacks professionalism. He could have been fired in other ways. You know, yeah, he could have just told them they were done. Exactly. You know, so he didn't have to do it like that. But he went out with a bang. You know, um, as they say, uh, he did all that for what three hundred and fifteen lives. Did you guys see that one? Yeah. <laughs> like less than 400 people were even watching it. Like, man, it would have been nice if Paul Pierce had like thousands. So that way, he really would have went out with a bang, you know, but he didn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so for everybody, uh, you know, so I'm definitely on the side of things like who cares? He didn't care. He's still set for life. Okay. Now, you and I, we can't be getting fired from ESPN. Okay, you're not gonna catch me smoking some reform <laughs> camera over there with some with some strippers shaking that you know what, you know, the tail <laughs> feathers, you know, exactly. You know, you're not gonna catch me doing that. Okay, that's lack of professionalism. I go to ESPN and my superiors and my bosses and let them know I was done. Okay. But hey, like I said, none of us are Paul Pierce, and he is Paul Pierce, which is why he did what he did. I agree. It, Cause after it, you know, once he got fired, you know, he got to drop another video. It was like, I got something else up my sleeve. Like it looked like he didn't really care. I just didn't think it was right because it was like, dang, I'm just looking at it as you know how quick it happened. Like, dang, the players can't even freedom. Like, I understand you got people that put up smoking cigars and in clubs doing other stuff. And the man get fired for that. I understand, you know, you'll never know who watching, who impact, but I'm on I'm on 50-50 with this one. Ask, you, you haven't seen it, but I hope go look at that video. Just go look at that video once, you know, once we get off. I, uh, I wonder why he did it. Like, I that's do, what I'm waiting for. I do got a question though. Um mm -hmm. so they say he had marijuana, you know, or or in other words. For the people that don't know that what where marijuana is, the weed. You feel me? So <laughs> I ain't see that. You know, he, he had that. But what's the difference between that cigars and Lou Williams was at the strip club? Imagine. Hey, Street. that's what I'm. You feel I'm me? I'm looking at it too. The bigger picture. the Clippers didn't fire him. Really for some, some like, girls just, shaking a butt and him talking like he ain't saying like crazy. I understand that what you're coming from, um, Abdul, professionalism, I get that. But at the end of the day, man, we all human. If, look, I'm gonna be honest with you. If I'm if I got Paul Pierce money, look, look. Oh, uh, he had Paul Pierce, though. So. Uh, if I had Paul Pierce, money, do it. So, <laughs> I'm cutting up, okay? I'm cutting up. Okay. So I, I just feel like the man, the man, it he it's okay, in my opinion. It's okay what he did. I'm, I don't have no problem because so yeah, I'm fifty fifty. Abdul said it wasn't. The, you said it was. The was mar the marijuana thing that shouldn't really. I think that's what that's legal in California. So what they tripping for? He stayed in California in L.A. So for, that's well, number one. And number two. So Jordan and them smoking cigars. That what's the like? What, they it's smoking. At the end of the day, it's smoking. You smoking like cigars? You smoking. <laughs> It wasn't really because of the weed. Nobody actually knows what was in there. This, it could have been tobacco. I, I ain't seen no weed. Nobody knows what it was. Well, like I, the main issue was the tail feather. Okay, when you got the t when you got a bunch of naked women, half naked women in in the in the visual, you got to understand ESPN is owned by Disney. Disney is a family co corporation. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Exactly. Oh yeah, Disney owns many networks, my brother. Disney is a powerhouse, <laughs> you know? So, you know, we don't know what was in it. It could have been tobacco. We don't know, you know, but when you got the strippers, that's what was really got him fired in my opinion. So, okay, and and okay, about the I'm I'm going to get to the strippers in a minute. But when you say you don't know what it is and everything, I just thought about it. Shannon Sharp be having black and miles and stuff on the show, literally on the show. <laughs> That's so, not ESPN. 
That's not ESPN. I knew you. But 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 similar. it's something they they similar though. You feel me? You don't know the <laughs> rules though. Like it's not ESPN. So FS1 may have different rules than ESPN. It may be less stricter. It may so be you can bring Hennessy and, and Black and Mild on the show. Oh, and I, I, hey, like I said, you we don't really know. And and far as and far as the strippers is. Not you know you know how I feel about Ellen Iverson you know I I love Ellen Iverson but you don't think he was hanging with strippers back in his playing days? Listen, we all know the past. It, you know, all Jordan, that. Dennis Rodman, Listen, they they all hanging with. That, time, this is a different profession. They they was ball athletes. I know, like I said, athletes and companies because I don't think you know your life should be controlled or watched once you off the court. But that's not how it is now. That which is wrong. We're just going to go to the last topic, which is Charles Barkley on politicians. High politicians, if y'all don't know, he said they divide and conquer to keep power. You know, he make they make whites and blacks clash for them to keep making money. I want to know, either one of y'all can go how y'all feel about this. I feel like he said something real, just real about this topic. Well, for one, I just want to tell you boys about the um, – the Senate and the House of Representatives and things like that. And this rings into that topic. You know, mm. the people that make all the laws and all those things are in their 50s, 60s, and 70s. 70s. Some even 80s. No. So the problem with that is this is a young person's world. It's not a, it's not a 60, 70, 80. Your time has passed. Okay. So for you to still be having the because listen. If you're 60, 70, 80, you came from a time where um, marijuana, for example, was just illegal. Oh, my God, he's smoking weed. He's going to hell. You know, that's, that's, the, time. That, that, that's the time they come from, no, X, you know? Yeah. So if you're still thinking like that in today's world, you don't need to be making laws. You know, your time is passed. You, listen, this is the problem with old people, and this is the beautiful thing about our generation. I think our generation will be one of the first generations to adapt. So when we're 60, 70 years old, we can still be cool with the youngsters. Like, hey, mm -hmm. hey, man, I get it. To life different now. You know, when, when I was growing up, life was changing and life's still changing. I'm not going to be stuck in my ways to mess up the world for the people who are young. You get what I'm saying? So... Honestly, he's right. Some of the people that are in power do not need to be. We need to get younger faces in power. That's my opinion. And when I say younger, minimum like 30 years old, you know, because you got to live some kind of life to, to say, yeah. to start making some laws, you know. So let's just say 30 years old and up, 40 even, you know. But to have 60 year olds and 70 year olds still making the majority of, of laws. In, the, in a world that we run, a world that we're working in, I don't agree with that. I ask how you feel about that, what Charles Barkley said in do. Xavier? Yeah, no, I, I'm just uh, <laughs> I'm just thinking, man, like, because I'm not really in the politics uh, like that, uh, to tell y'all the truth. I not really, a politics, boy? You know, I'm not in the politics on, at all. Got, got I, I, just, I, 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 stay, I stay away from that stuff, honestly. But if, can you refresh my memory a little bit of summarize what Charles said? Um, basically, Charles Buckley said the higher up people, higher politics, or mm -hmm. you know, they are trying to divide. Well, they divided the world or well, made whites and blacks clash, and it wasn't no racism until they made racism, basically. And he said this to keep them from make from us making money like them. So they make more money and let us fight against each other. Because he said nobody was born racist. Nobody was born racist. Nobody was born racist. That's, that's a fact. He said the truth. I mean, to me, he said the truth. <laughs> okay. I agree. I can agree. I can agree um, to, to a certain extent with that. Uh, nobody's born racist. I, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I feel like, yeah, nobody's, for the most part, nobody's born racist, but you got to understand some of these families out here, you know, they they still stuck in the old ways, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we know. 
I, I understand that uh, what Charles is saying, now that you broke it down, I understand what Charles is saying, but at the same time, I do believe, yes, the, the people in the higher offices are messing up, but at the same time, we've been dealing with this for years and years and years, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's not just them, you know, it's, it's something else. I, I don't know. Like I said, I don't be in politics like that. I'm, I'll be on the sideline, you know what I'm saying? I'll be on the sideline with it. Um, I, I feel like it's something else, not just them, because we've been dealing with it for so long. Uh, it's not getting better. Uh, you know, we still, we still have people struggling, still trying to recover from COVID, how they got laid off the jobs and stuff. Yeah, we all got the STEMI, the STEMI, the STEMI. But I mean, you know, that's that's not enough. Um, you know, I, it would be nice to see everybody equal, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, or at least making some dough, rolling up, rolling in that broccoli, you know what I'm saying, rolling in some money. So um it would be nice to see that. It would be nice to see a change in the the offices, you know, the House of Representatives. It would be nice to have some young faces because definitely, I definitely believe, you know, if you have some young faces in there, they can help the old folks out. Like you said, Abdul, adapt. They can help them adapt. I mean, you know, uh, the new age. The new age is, I wouldn't say smarter, but we just more advanced. There we go. We more advanced than the, than the old age. Yeah. So yeah, that's what that's what I just think, man. Um, I feel like uh, it would be nice to see you know equal equality, uh, across uh the world, not just you know mainly blacks versus white not just that man it's bigger than that so it would be nice to see you know new new young faces in the office man they would definitely make an incredible change mm -hmm. absolutely i agree with both of y'all you know he said the truth and you know what they do when you say the truth they try to make sure you don't say say no more or you know they're gonna try to lower it out we're gonna make sure it, it, it's heard because nobody was born racist i don't judge nobody you know that's something that was taught but and have other people that is making money, you just the money is the root of all you. So you just doing dirt, you're not doing nothing special. You just messing the world up. That it was all that's you know, we're not perfect, but you just messing the world up even more. But um, anyways, thank y'all for tuning in. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe on our Instagram and Twitter at spot underscore on sports. This is the new wave of sports. Where we're not just aggro, we're spot on. I am Wayne Galloway. With me as always, Abdul and X, fellas. That man, Dooley, y'all know where to find me. Once again, the number one sports analyst on planet Earth, baby. <laughs> if you spend. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> hey, y'all, man, I can't even do it, man. Dooley made me laugh, but hey, come in, like, and subscribe, man. Y'all already know the deal, man. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> this is final sports, y'all. Uh...